It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the Nancy D. Harrington Campus Naming Celebration. As we gather today in honor and recognition of the late President Emerita Dr. Nancy Harrington, I'm delighted to see so many community members come together to celebrate her life and legacy. How meaningful it is to have the opportunity to celebrate on the physical grounds that she worked so tirelessly to acquire during her tenure. Dr. Harrington was a fierce public higher education advocate a strong focus on the North Shore and a powerful example of the kind of impact and transformation that can take share under a strong, dedicated, loyal leader. Now in those words I just used to describe her, you'll notice I used the words strong force, powerful, dedicated, working tirelessly. We must remember back in 1990s, it was quite unusual for a woman to be given the top leadership spot in an institution like this. Her strength of character, her personality, and you all know she did have a very strong will, which everyone who knows her experienced directly. This, of course, opened up a trailblazer path for Nancy and for her career. With a profound 51-year career history at Salem State, she was a staunch advocate for this institution and the value of public education. Simply put, she was and still is seen by so many as the soul of Salem State. What a beautiful day. President Harrington would have it no other way. There was, a, there was a cloud around a little while ago, but I'm sure she scared it away. <laughs> As we begin the new academic year, it is indeed a picture-perfect day to recognize President Emerita Nancy D. Harrington on the campus made possible by her leadership. Behind you. Educator, visionary, trailblazer. These are just a few of the words that come to mind when I think of Dr. Harrington. Others include role model, friend, and mentor to many. Shortly after being sworn in as state representative in 2005, I was called to her office for a meeting. Yes, I was called to her office, like the principal's office, for a meeting. And anybody who had been there knows exactly what I meant. It was my first time in Meyer Hall, in her large corner office, adorned with artifacts representing years of accomplishment, commanded respect. A well-known and powerful leader, Dr. Harrington's larger-than-life presence filled the room. Just then, and perhaps sensing my fear, her welcoming and friendly smile, saying, how are you doing, Representative, put me right at ease. Dr. Harrington's contributions to Salem State and public higher education are seemingly endless. Embodying everything that Salem State stands for, Dr. Harrington had a keen ability to inspire support that allowed Salem State to grow and evolve. She even had her own tagline, consistency through change. Among her many accomplishments, Dr. Harrington initiated and directed the development of the Master of Science in Nursing program, the Master's Degree programs in Business Administration and Social Work. Each of these was the first of its kind among the Massachusetts State Colleges. In addition, Dr. Harrington herself was a woman of many firsts. The first graduate of Salem State to become its president. The first female president in the school's history. I'm gonna repeat that. The first female president in the school's history. The first Salem State, the first Salem resident to lead this institution and the first Salem State president to secure a major multi-million dollar gift. Dr. Harrington's legacy is deeply rooted in the growth of Salem State and the people who make up the fabric of our community. In the spring of 2003, Dr. Harrington wrote, Salem State has never been a spectator by the side of the road watching a race pass by. Throughout our long history, we have run every race, passed every mile marker, sought every advantage that would take us to the head of the crowd. We have always endeavored to seek the lead and retain it. Today, we honor Dr. Harrington's legacy by continuing to run that race, to lead, and to encourage our students to never stand on the sidelines. We remember our roots, our commitment to education and inclusivity, and the people, the students, the faculty, the staff, and of course, the alumni who are all the very heart of this wonderful place 
that feels like home to many. I'm honored and I'm really struggling because uh, it's hard, you know? Nancy, what, Na Nancy, Nancy. So I just want to say a few things of my friend and my colleague, of working with her and of having the honor to have her be a part of my life. And once she became president, it became very clear that it was not simply an affinity, but it was a love. And that's really what I want, the thought that I want us to hold today, that Nancy Harrington loved this campus, loved every aspect of it. It's people, it's buildings, it's work, everything it represented, she loved. When I think of love, I, I mean to have a feeling about something, to care about something in a way that you encourage it and you enhance it and you speak for it and you value it. That's the kind of love that Nancy had for Salem State, the value, the encouragement. Nancy Harrington valued public higher education and its role, its purpose. <laughs> that every single student, every individual, whether we were talking about a kid, and I have had these students in my office, a student who's English, who barely spoke English but somehow got themselves admitted. And that particular student went on to be, went on to be a chemist with NASA. Whether we were talking about that student who came to Salem to fulfill a dream, or a student, a widow, who had waited, we used to sort of say you waited till your husband died, huh? To fulfill her dream and at the age of 74, 75, crossed the stage and was shook Nancy Harrington's hand and graduated. These were the students. These were the students that Nancy Harrington said, this university is for you. Whether you are majoring, choosing a career or field of art or nursing or history, we open our doors for you and that passion that Nancy held for public higher education and the opportunity that it holds for every student is something that should infuse every decision, every idea that we who stay in her name support. She was a friend, a colleague, someone that my life was enriched by. And we like to say once in a while that we kind of grew up together. She was a couple of years older than I, not by much. But we grew up at Salem State together, watched it become Salem State College and grow into the university that it is. In order to explain the impact that President Harrington had on my life, I have to start at the beginning, the story of how we met. It was my freshman year during Welcome Week. I was at the North Campus Chartwells with my new college friends. When we walked in, I noticed President Harrington sitting having her lunch, and I pointed her out to our group. They were not that impressed. I, on the other hand, was starstruck. One of my new friends, Pat Alamo, turned and looked at me and said, I dare you to grab your lunch, walk over, and sit down. I looked right at him and I said, dare accept it. I got my lunch, walked over, introduced myself, and asked if I could join her. She said yes, a decision I often wondered if she regretted. <laughs> we talked about my impression of Salem State so far, what my major was, goals, and my interests. We both finished our lunch. I thanked her for allowing me to join her and we went our separate ways. A week later during lunch at North Campus Chartwell, to my surprise, 
There was President Harrington sitting and having her lunch. As I walked by, I said hello and asked how she was doing. She looked up at me and said, why, hello, Miss Slazar. I am doing well today, and yourself? I remember thinking, oh my God, she knows my name. <laughs> Over the next three years, I would join President Harrington for lunch at least once a month, and our conversations never lacked. We talked about a variety of different topics, how I was doing on papers I was writing, if I ever got that new job, or if I ever passed that weather and climate midterm. During one of our last lunches, I asked how would I manage without our talks and her guidance. Her response is something I will always cherish. Miss Slazar, you will be just fine. Everything was inside of you from day one. I just helped you in realizing it yourself. The same way that President Harrington helped mold me into the leader I am today is how she led Salem State. She saw the potential. She saw the bigger picture, she saw what was needed, and she saw how to achieve it, not solely as president, but as the Salem State community. Central Campus, along with so much more, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for her leadership, her vision, and more importantly, for her. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for President Harrington. That dare I took my freshman year was the best dare that I have ever taken. Uh, and it's my Thank privilege so to represent the class of 1960, which uh, in my estimation, of course, has turned out to be the best class that ever graduated. <laughs> I met Nancy in September 1956 at Salem Teachers College. I have to get my notes out now. My very first impression during that first week of orientation was, wow, she's tall. She's quiet, almost shy, not the Nancy you guys knew, and she was friendly. About six weeks later, I said, oh my God, she's smart. You know, she, every class we had, she would get A's and everything. And of course, it went on to prove that every single term of our four years, as we went from Salem Teachers College to Salem State College, she was on the Dean's List, always. Our class has remained close. When we were planning our 50th reunion, Nancy, of course, was on that committee, and I challenged Nancy to give a generous donation so we could start an endowment that would be given annually to someone in education at what was then, we graduated with Salem State College, now you become a university. So Nancy met my grant, and she got another 5,000 from Francis Hunkins out in Washington, and we started an endowment and pledged that our class would raise $100,000 to be used for scholarships for students going into education. I'm happy to tell you that as of June, we had raised $105,301, and it's not over. Also, something that Nancy did at our 50th reunion made me think about sharing this moment with you today. I want to ask Brian, Brian, could you stand up, please, in front of the podium? <sighs> when we were having our 50th, 50th reunion, uh, Nancy set out a plan to give a white rose. Excuse me. To give a white rose in a face to everyone who had passed. And I have six classmates from the class of 1960 to give Brian a rose in honor of Nancy. Please. We're a little slow, we're a little arthritic, we have a few canes, but these are all great members of the class of 1960. I'm just actually up here to do a sort of a quick segue into uh, my family spokesperson, you know, Neil Harrington, former mayor of Salem. But I would like to make two comments that I think are really relevant here. And number one is, 
Henry was tactful in understating the fact that Nancy was a little shy. Growing up, Nancy was painfully shy, almost to the point that I would have described it as cripplingly shy. And she avoided things like confrontation. Uh, that was not who she was. She was often not demonstrative or emotive because it was difficult for her. But I will tell you this, that when I was informed by Cheryl that they were considering naming the campus after Nancy, I knew precisely that this would have been something that she wouldn't have been able to, in her wildest dreams, handle 14 years after the fact, to have the main campus named after her. And it's almost difficult for me to visualize her holding it together during the last hour. Um, I don't know what it would have done with her because she could only summon all of this formidable personality and all of this passion through the channel that was Salem State University because she cared so incredibly much about Salem State and all that it represented and all that it could do. And this w enabled her, it really made it easy for her to get in people's faces about it. When she raised funds, when she, when she proselytized for Salem State, she could channel that and that was something that a lot of performers have, but believe me, it took some overcoming as a young girl. Um, this is pretty much the perfect gift as far I'm concerned. I guess I'd said to somebody, the purchase of the Sylvania plant here was analogous in the context of the school to the Louisiana purchase for the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and I know this is personal bias on my part, but you know, President Jefferson got like what, Jefferson Avenue named after him? <laughs> I would, no offense against Jefferson Avenue specifically, but I would much prefer to have the main campus named after me. And, and thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of my family members and my aunt, because if she's up there listening, and I don't have any doubt that she is, this is moving her to tears. Good afternoon, everyone. I've just been uh, asked to share a few remarks, if I might, <clears throat> from a somewhat different perspective on this uh, auspicious occasion uh, about the connection um, between Salem State and not just Nancy, but the Harrington family. It's a relationship that began over six decades ago. It continues to this day, and God willing, it will extend for several years to come. Multiple generations of the Harrington family have had a close relationship with Salem State for a number of years. The trail may have been blazed by Nancy and Kevin in terms of the relationship between our family and the college, but the underlying truth is that, as I said, several members of the extended family have benefited from the first class education that they have received at the college and now the university, and I have no doubt that they will continue to benefit from that from the, in the years to come. The bond between the Harringtons and Salem State is enduring, as I said, and is fitting that we're here to cement that bond, so to speak, by dedicating the central campus to our beloved Nancy. If you'll permit me just a minute to digress from this theme and talk a little bit about Nancy as a product of the Harrington family, rather than to focus on her enviable legacy here at the university, which has been so eloquently stated by the previous speakers. She was born in Salem into an impoverished childhood, as were so many of her contemporaries at that time. I don't have the time to go into talking about the remarkable legacies that all of the other people of that generation have left for the many Harrington descendants who are here today. But I'll just talk a bit about Nancy. Nancy learned never to be afraid. She learned never to shy away from a challenge and to always give her best. She cultivated within her own persona, and Brian just made a reference to this, an earnestness and a willfulness of purpose that can overcome obstacles such as economic disadvantage and occasional social awkwardness. She shared these traits with so many of the people of her generation, as I mentioned. But of course, most of them never went on to public life. 
The public aspects of Nancy's career are well known, but I'm convinced that it was the development of her character, born of adversity and nurtured by a persistent mother in the love and support of her siblings that helped Nancy get her footing in life. After Nancy graduated from high school, it was Salem State that provided her with the opportunity for a lifetime of dedication to teaching and promoting the cause of public higher education that was shared not only with her siblings, her brother became the president of Massachusetts Maritime Academy, but also my father and countless other public servants, such as the one that president, ones that President Keenan alluded to earlier, who spent good portions of their public lives advocating for public higher education. Nancy gave so much to Salem State, but the college, now a university, gave her so much in return and provided her with a chance to cultivate her overwhelming desire to help others, perhaps as some sort of recompense for her childhood when others always did for her. Who knows? She was almost fanatical whenever you would speak with her about the importance of education and lifelong learning, whether it was for those who didn't always follow the straight path from school into work, those who were looking to go back to college, or those who came from other countries and cultures where opportunities such as those provided by Salem State did not exist. After many years of waitings in the wings, Nancy, of course, was appointed president and she stepped into the spotlight. She carved her own path. And what a trailblazer she was. For many years, those of us in the family marveled at how skillfully she led Salem State through the development of what was once a one campus college, a one building college at one point, before Fred Meyer got involved, um, into a multi-campus facility that you see here uh, today. Our family is very proud of her, and we're so grateful to her alma mater for honoring her here today. She and the entire Harrington family will always be a part of Salem State.